All right, man. So up the hill we go. Pretty dope. Whoa, the blizzard! fall like that. It's pretty rough. That's so cool. Gnomes to the help of the spirits are among us. Or the help full spirits are among us. Here, let's, uh, let's watch the uh, caribou skin clothing. Caribou was... It, it provided for us in many ways. Our clothing in those days was made of all caribou skin. I grew up wearing caribou pants. Mittens, caribou skin mattress, blankets. Some people had boots that were made with wolf leggings, sealskin sole bottoms. Banning was shaved to make insoles. They kept us quite dry and warm as well. But the caribou skin clothing was the best. We would get as many yearlings as we could for our outer clothing. And for a heavy winter, we would get caribou in February or March because the hair was the longest and the skin was the thickest and we would use those for our winter gear. With that stuff on, you could sleep outside in 50 below and it wouldn't bother you a bit. Yo, that's amazing. 50 below inside of a caribou? Come on now. Yo, did I just drown her? Oh my goodness. The girl almost did. Being different at the box. Reveal to the girl. Just how beautiful the helpers were. This is a little crazy. <laughs> That's so cool. Let's watch the video. Silla is the weather. It also means the atmosphere. First the Muma or the land. And it's anything from the land into the moon, the sun, the stars. That's Silla. It's uh it's a very spiritual and we have a relationship with Silla. Uh, Silla has a soul in the same way we do as people, in the same way animals do. I think spirit helpers in and of themselves are really about how we're connected with things. And so it may be that there is a spirit helper that shows themselves as a bird to show you the way home. Or it may be a spirit helper that actually decides to show themselves with the face and body of a man instead of their animal form. And so I think one of the things that's hard to understand is that it's 
not one way of seeing things, it's one way of knowing you're connected to everything. We've always had that spirituality of everything around us. It's the interaction you have with the air you breathe, the, the ocean that you gather resources from, the rivers from which you gather fish, the tundra from which you pick berries, the animals that keep themselves. It's, it's all, of, all of that. The girl and the box kept each other out of so much trouble. But they found their way back home. So let's see, uh, we earned a video here. The trapping trial. Trail. In the winter, I mean, when we were traveling, we didn't Italy. build shot houses, we built snow houses. In Canada, they call them igloo, but here in Alaska, we call them apuya. We do a day of travel, and then we'd make an apuya. The next day, my father would set traps, spend the day there, rest the dogs, give them something to eat. And then the following day, we continue to the next place. We'd go to my dad's sister, who had a house at the barn. They had a small sod house over there. We didn't have to do anything. We just visit with them, and my dad and my sister were glad to see each other, and they'd talk away while us kids played outside or go to sleep. By the time we get back to our home, my father would leave us with our aunt, or with my grandmother. And then he start on his trips and go check his trap line. We were not into 85 kind of time, you know. We're in a totally different kind. We're in ecological time. Damn, I can't even imagine that. It's so crazy. It's like, so spiritual, man. got bodied real hard.
They got me gas now. Something was terribly wrong. The terrible man had arrived while the girl was away. He was searching for something and would stop at nothing until he found it. The village was totally devastated. He said that with each gust of wind, the powdery snow blew in every direction. Her girl could not believe what she saw. Everything in sight was destroyed. Her people were gone. How could this be? I couldn't have just been just a blizzard. Giant moon spirits appeared. It was sorrow for the girl's loss. The loons weren't the only ones to arrive. Strange little people came from underground. Oh damn, I gotta knock the F out. That is messed up. Oh, controls are the spot. Come here, granddaughter, said the old man. How does he know me? So the girl, because I've been watching over you. If I only had my drum. Help you find the one who did this to your village. Let's watch the heartbeat of the community. Drum is something that's common to all cultures in Alaska. All cultures have a drum that may have some stylistic differences or differences in materials that's made, but it's still a recognition of life and vitality. And the drum mirrors the heartbeat. And when you continue drumming soon, it will be in line with your heartbeat. That's 
what it's supposed to be, the heartbeat of the community, and it symbolizes vitality. That's dope. And it's, it's the most tremendous feeling to be in a room and to have one long row of all the drummers and to have that feeling of unity and everyone beating in harmony. The drum beat in unison is the most beautiful feeling. And to know that you're connected, you're on the land that you are connected to. And even if you grew up outside the community, that which is in you comes from this area. And it's, it's the greatest feeling. This guy's going in, man. But look at his shirt. He's styling. This is a crazy drum. Yo, man. I like to teach you something. Now you can learn a lesson. Where do I have to move it to, though? Okay, well, that answers that question. Yo, those animations are too. Oops, hey. The German was interrupted by the girl. And they came out to see who was making all that noise. Yo, I got bodied free. All right. So on that note, guys, thank you for watching. As always, see you guys in the next video. Look out for uh. Some words never alone. Alright, later guys. Peace.